Vibes Cartel discusses next step with Gaza Nation. Now, people, it's been touted that Vibes Cartel lose the appeal by many waste vloggers, but I have nothing to say about that. We leave that to them. Anyhow, Vibes Cartel addresses Gaza Nation. So last evening, Vibes Cartel posted, Don't get weary, Gaza Nation. Guess it's time for a trip. You come in? Hashtag Bossy Slaves. Hashtag Corruption Prosecutor. And hashtag crosses police deleted exclamation loading hashtag true justice hashtag privy council hashtag UKGB and he post the symbol for the, ju- the judicial law judicial court in the United Kingdom. Now Vibes Cartel's lawyer sat down with Miss Kitty last evening and he gave a thorough rundown of what the Privy Council will entail. Listen. Of course, uh, talking about uh, what has transpired today, we have with us now online uh, Queen's Counsel, uh, Tom Tavares Finson, one of the lawyers on the Vibes Cartel case. QC, good afternoon. Learn at Queen's Council, good afternoon. How are you? Yes, I, we've been busy. <laughs> You've been working um, hard, and so have I. But it's great to talk to you uh, today. I know the circumstances have been uh, overwhelming, uh, to say the least, for today. Uh, what can you tell us about the judgment and how it, you're feeling about it? Yeah, I, I don't know if the correct analysis is to say it has been overwhelming. Um, Approximately four years ago, this case finished. Um, we indicated an intention to appeal, and the appeal was heard two years ago. Yes. So, from conviction to judgment, it's four years. It's really, in, in our view, quite unprecedented in, in the view of Valerie Roberts and I, who appeared for Mr. Palmer. Yes. Unprecedented. Yes. So, therefore, you prepare and prepare for the worst, the hope for the best. And bottom line is that this is not the worst possible outcome. What could what could have been the worst? Po- I was about to ask that. What could because uh, uh, Queen's Counsel uh, Valerie Nita Robertson mentioned that you know there are many different outcomes, right? What was the worst, and what was and obviously the best would have been for it to be allowed. But what was the worst that could have happened? I'm telling you from my point of view, the worst that could have happened would be uh, the possibility of a retrial. Because then you would have been in the courts for another five, six, or seven years based on what has happened here. Yes. Because eight and a half years he has been before the courts. Yes. Um, this, so this is, this is, what this does, what this does is open the possibility of taking the matter outside of the jurisdiction. Mm-hmm. outside of the geographical jurisdiction. Yes. And people let the court to the council. And we know that a the council appeal and turnaround will be significantly less than the four years that we have been left waiting to hear what is happening in this appeal. And how so, long will it take to appeal to the Privy Council? How long is that what process? I can, what I can tell you is that it will be significantly less than the two years that this judgment to rest. Yes. So, um, so, in terms so the of... Line, the bottom line is that if you are making a, a, a sensible assessment of the thing and you realize that they are taking two years to write a judgment, mm-hmm. you know, you come to the conclusion that they must be writing something. Mm-hmm. And that they are putting their mind on, on writing a judgment that can stand up to some amount of scrutiny. In other words, this is what we expected. So did, we did the judgment shock you at all? Not in the slightest. Why not? Uh, um, the, some of the aspects of the evidence, I personally expected them to take that view of it. Let me just put it that way. Okay, that very well. That's a particular view of the evidence, and that don't surprise me in the slightest. 
Some person. I, 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 I have a view that this is because may very well have a different approach to the matter. Some persons, uh, QC, are saying that, uh, or may not understand, uh, you know, the legalese and all that goes into a case. And they may think that the, the lawyer didn't do a good job or didn't do enough. In terms of accounting for, I mean, you're, you're obviously one of the leading, uh, you know, attorneys and counsel. You're a Queen's counsel, and that means something. The Q and the C are not just ornaments. And so talk to me about the work that would have gone into a case and a matter like this to put before the court to get the judgment? Well, to start with, recognize that the original trial um, took place over, it is the longest criminal trial in the history of, of Jamaica. So that alone will tell you the amount of work that, that went into that. That is to say the original trial. Um, preparing the appeal was a lengthy process in relation to cartel um, Valerie Nita Robertson and myself and my team and her team um, prepared that. The other lawyers, Bert Samuel, as we have seen yesterday, and Robert Fletcher would have worked in relation to the other matters, but it's a lot of work. Yes. Um, you know, you, <laughs> as far as to whether or not the lawyers did a good job, there's an objective. There's an objective analysis of it. The fact that the trial took so long. The fact that the trial involved so many lengthy legal and technical issues speak to the fact that the lawyers were working on both sides. Yes. Prosecution and defense. And the fact that the court of appeal took two years to respond. <laughs> Yeah. But they, they could say they they could say Queen's Council they could say they are overwhelmed they had backlog and they had many other matters and that two years is not it's long but it is not unusual. It is unprecedented as far as that's concerned and it is an outrageous state of affairs and I have no doubt that the Privy Council will have something to step up. Very well. There's a part of the judgment, uh, uh, Mr. Finson, Tavares Finson, that uh, the judges have given uh, counsel uh, seven days, I think, to respond to the sentencing. Uh, talk to us. Could you start to speak to that aspect of the judgment, please? What does that mean and why is that important? Well, the president has asked for a, an indication as to how much time the appellant has spent in custody. Um, I believe that specifically said prior to the trial. Yes. Um, so that's not a difficult thing to, to compose. So that will be filed early next week in the court. Just indicating how much time each of them spent in custody. So that would okay. that time would have been subtracted from what? No. What is I can't, that? I can't, no, no. I'm not going to speculate as to why they want that. Mm -hmm. But you can you can conclude that they are looking at the question of the sentencing to determine. Because one of the grounds is that the sentence was... Manifestly manifest, excessive. Excessive, mm -hmm. a third party. Yes. And 20, 20 years and 25 years for the other sentence. But no, I'm sorry, 35. And 30. 25 and 30. Yes. So they are looking at that. Whether they interfere with it is another matter. I don't know what they would do. And uh, do you have any idea how long now that would take for you to get that judgment back? Or no, that no, they said, they said that they gave, they're giving us. The president said he would give us seven days to file it, and I believe he indicated that they would respond in two. Have you, have you spoken to your client yet since the, uh, since the judgment was read or handed down? Um, I have communicated with him yet. How is he feeling about... I need has to explain he... something to you. Let me explain something. Yes. For at least four months now, I've formed a certain view. And I've spoken with Mr. Palmer's, Mr. Palmer's dad, who I communicate with on a regular basis. Yes. And I've spoken with Shorty, who I communicate with on a regular basis. And uh, we work preparing ourselves for this very day. That's why I expect you that it don't come as any shock. Right. Well, how is Mr. Palmer taking it so far? What that are... is going to try then. Father Palmer. The, 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 the Adija Palmer. And Father Palmer as well. And even Shorty. We've well, we gone, you know. We don't understand it. We've moved on a long time enough. We've moved on. This is, we were actually hoping for this day so that we can move on. Either let go the man or uphold the conviction. Don't keep it waiting for two years. Yes. You have another step to take. 
We can't take that step unless you give us out of our hand. So in a way, this is a relief. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I, I totally understand. But as, as I said, Queen's Council, remember, we're to, uh, you and I will understand, but we have to talk, we have to break it down and distill it so that my listeners can have a, a full understanding of what is happening. Yes. Let me break it down and show you something. Many Jamaicans here in this trial know instinctively that something was wrong. They know that something was wrong with the telephone because they have the man's phone and the phone was locked up the police were using it. Yes. Instinctively, you know that to put that in evidence, now something must wrong with it. But but instinctively, but let me but with but hold, hold on, Queen's Council, hold on, Queen's Council, one second. It is now four o'clock, and I have to go to the news. So we're gonna just kindly ask you to hold online with us Queen's Counsel Tom Tavares Finson, his attorney at law and he's online uh, walking us through uh, what are their plans and of course how all of this uh, has come uh, together. Uh, thank you so much QC for your patience. You were saying uh, before the break about the instinct that Jamaicans would instinctively know right, pick up. Instinctively persons listen to the case and they know that there is something wrong. Let me just give you two examples. You know that something is wrong. Police take a phone from a man they have it using, they don't lock it up. Anybody have access to it, you know that then instinctively there must be something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, in relation to the jury, the fact that there was some interference with the jury, that instinctively something is wrong with that. Okay? Yes. No. What has happened is that you find yourself in a position where you cannot come outside of the jurisdiction of the Jamaicans, well, it's the geographical jurisdiction, unless a verdict is given. Right. So what we were in a state for the last two years. In limbo. Yeah, we are in a state of limbo. Yes. What this has done now is given us the green light, in a way, to move forward and go elsewhere. The but what about very well? But let me put it to your Queen's Council that there are some persons who believe that it is not that the defense was weak or the defense didn't put a proper case or there were so many problems uh, with the phone and other things, but then that overall the prosecution presented a meritorious case, a strong case uh, on which he was convicted. And so, really and truly, all the other mishaps and all the other things that happened were not necessarily inimical to the case. What do you say to that? Okay. So what, what you have just done is argued essentially what the court of appeal, I believe, once, that once, you, once you go through the judgment, you will see that what they are essentially doing is saying exactly that, and it's called the proviso. A proviso. Yes, a proviso, yes. Yeah, so but if, 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 <laughs> if the court of appeal or anyone here um, believes that you can use a proviso to raise a case to a particular standard to give a man 35 years in prison, then that's fine. That's their view. Yes. And I've taken issue with it here. We've taken issue with it at the Privy Council. How, how should... Uh, we're looking at the Vibes Cartel case right now, you know, Adija Palmer. But in terms of, you know, constitutionality and in terms of Jamaicans' rights, uh, QC, how should Jamaicans really be looking at this? Because it's Vibes Cartel today. It could be you. It could be somebody else tomorrow. Is this judgment at all or this the way this case has uh, proceeded and happened? Should this be of cause or concern to Jamaican citizens? But, but the mere fact that you are waiting two years for a judgment, you don't think that that would raise alarm? Yes. And that is what I'm saying to you. It, it, undermines, it undermines the confidence that people can have in the system. And you, you, are, you are waiting from the time you are sentenced, four years. You are waiting from a judge, for a judgment from the court of appeal. So you're proceeding to the Privy Council. What form will that take? Uh, explain to us, walk us through how that happens and what grounds are you going to bring to the Privy Council? Are you going to add new grounds or are you taking a different ground? How does that all work? That, all of that is to be decided. But the first thing to do, we will look carefully at the judgment, make a determination as to where we go forward and seek leave from the Court of Appeal to go to the Privy Council. Very well. All right, sir. Thank you so very much for your time. And uh, to you and your team, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. You too, and sir. remember, do not go outside unless you have to. Now, you, of course, <laughs> you make it alive. You are essential, sir.